Hello everyone, thanks you for visiting my channel. Today we're gonna do a little bit of different is how to build a PC in point of view. So I have a new computer that I want to build. All the links will be in the description below. So first off, you gotta get your uh, Philips and uh, these are the things that you would need. And let's try to uh, remove the the plate over here the glass plates so we do it uh, in each side and you have to be very very careful with this tampered glass it could sometimes depends on your case that you purchase is gonna fall off so I previously installed a solid-state drive right on the case and I also put in a new fan in there because uh, the case came in with a two uh, three fans pre-installed so I wanted to have a cooler uh, temperature in the case. So let's inspect the back side of the panel of this PC. And uh, you remove it just like this. And it comes in with an RGB controller. It's actually ARGB. And it's, it's pretty nice that this case came with it. And it also comes in with a couple more cords in there for ARGB that you can customize and probably plug it into your motherboard. And it comes in with a mounting plate for your solid state drive that you can put in the back, you know, to save space. So looking over in this side, uh, how I put in that extra fan is I have to remove the front panel. And you have to go in the bottom. It's good to start in the bottom part of the front panel and just pull it carefully. And then you slide your finger across the, the line of that front panel. Same thing on the other side. You do the same thing. You just pry it off, like carefully. There you go, and then you slide your finger across that crack until you reach the top. And then, you know, you see this little uh, plastic thing where you, where, you, um, where you take out, and I put this uh, extra fan in there in the middle. So it's, uh, it's pretty nice to have an extra fan in there. And uh, the motherboard that I'm actually going to be getting in here is, uh, I'll show in a little bit, but from the PC that I have is that this CPU tends to go hot. So here's what I have, uh, Tough Gaming X570 Plus. And do a little bit of unboxing here. There's the Wi-Fi antenna and then there's the motherboard. And it looks very nice and it comes with instructions and it comes in with two SATA cable and some nice stickers right here. and. A, pa a backside panel so that's pretty cool and this an M2 screw for your um, uh, new M2 uh, hard drive that you're gonna be putting in solid state drive so you'll see it later so I'm removing it to the anti-static bag put them aside so here's so we can see what we're working on and I have this um, mounting plate for AIO. I wanted to, since I wanted to have cooler um, uh, AIO, I'm gonna use this one. Uh, so I took my Phillips and just unscrewed the original mounting plate that came in with the motherboard. Uh, the, in case you guys were wondering what kind of CPU I'm using, I'm gonna be using a, a Ryzen 7 3700X. It's uh, very new to me. I never worked with Ryzen. Um, Intel is, is really good too. They're very stable, but uh, I need, I just want to go the the Ryzen side. So typically, when you get an AIO, it comes in with this little back sticker. I think it's some kind of a heat um, protection or electrical protection. So you put this in the back after you remove the, the original back plate for the motherboard. Just stick it in there like so. And then you um, grab one of these back plate. This is uh, both compatible for Intel and AMD. So the other one is AMD, the other one is Intel. But I'm going to use the AMD one. And you have to look where the bump is. And the bump is where you want to make contact into the motherboard. So then I put this little screws in here. Make sure it locks into place. And it comes in with a tiny plastic washer that you plug it in so they do stay in place and you rotate that screw to make sure that they're locked as you can see how 
half moon looking screws they are so you just rotate it until bloop, there you go and then you put in this little plastic washer make sure it's all the way nice down and tight over there and do the same thing for the other two um two screws over here there you go finish it up nice tight Oop, there you go and now we're gonna mount this in the back of the motherboard make sure these bumps are hitting those um those pads that i put in earlier there we go and make sure they're all nicely lined up and then you see this little plastic thing this is what holds your screw in place so i'm dropping it like this make sure that they stop right in the beginning so then when you push it in it's tighter so this one is like pretty loose so what you do is you flip it and then you put it in then you push it down so that's when you'll know when it's like do i have it in the right orientation or not and there you have it so now you have the mount mounted the back plate for the AIO which we will focus on later uh, probably the last thing that we're going to be doing for this uh, motherboard so now here is the SSD I never worked with the M2 um, SSD before so this is like kind of my first time but you basically plug it in like a laptop so the motherboard uh, comes in originally with this really tiny screw so that's what you have to kind of set it up mount that little screw right here there you go you just hand tighten it you don't want to over tighten it with any tools just hand tighten it you don't want to crack the motherboard there you go and then you see those little contact so you put that in in that i believe pci slot so and you slide it in at an angle just like the laptop so just push it in until it plugs as you can see right here there you go see how they're lopsided like that now what you do is you get a smaller phillips because you're going to be dealing with a smaller screw and then you basically slide this guy in and try to screw them like that like I said, don't over tighten them, just tighten up where it sits still. And there you go, that's my first M2 SSD. So now we're gonna work in a memory card, uh, memory card, memory stick. I have a Vulcan uh, T4's uh, 3200 megahertz 16 gigabyte kit. And make sure that this little crack over here lines up to the motherboard. You don't wanna reverse them. Uh, so I only have four slots in here, so dual channel. So typically AMD motherboards, uh, they tend to have the second slot from the CPU. That's the channel that you want to start in with, unless you want to fill up the whole thing. Uh, it appears that this um, slot doesn't have, uh, only has one side that can be flipped open. Uh, I'm so used to the motherboard that has two uh, flip on the side where you you know uh, open them up but looks like this one's only one so this is pretty new to me but it's the same co uh, same concept you just line them up make sure you get see that's not the right way so you flip it and then you line them up and then you go ahead and plug it in until you hear a click so make sure that you plug it on both sides of the the memory stick until you hear a click like so Right, so that's one and now we're gonna go for the second one and you skip that one slot because that's the channel uh, that you want it to be in otherwise your computer won't boot up so yep you go line them up like so and then you do practically the same thing and obviously reference your um, motherboard instruction book to find out which slot you need to plug it in but typically that's for AMD motherboards that's where they start so here we're gonna hook up a power supply and there's a, a exhaust fan on the 
on the case there's some exhaust in the bottom so we're gonna flip it and this uh, uh, power supply I have is a uh, Aries games and it's it looks very good 850 uh, watts with um, gold rating and obviously I want to flip it because I want the air to go down and it's fully modular which is very nice and we're gonna go ahead and plug it in that way I know the name is upside down but that's how uh, you want the air to exhaust out of so here we go I like I like these little um, flathead hexagonal screws so you're gonna use that see I'm gonna screw this one part I try to tend to screw things in star pattern even though it's not a star pattern it's like four corner but I do it across the way so put this thing aside and tighten them up afterwards once everything's settled in there you go perfect all right, so the next thing is we're gonna put the back plate uh, for the motherboard. So here we are, a nice tough gaming um, back plate, like a small unboxing or more likely like unplasticking. <laughs> and then we lined them up just to see uh, uh, how they form in. Typically, you just like push that thing in, and it's very universal. A lot of motherboards come in with it. Uh, same thing they make it standard for all PC bare bones so I just push it into your click like so make sure you orient them the right way here we go all right that looks good all right so now what we're gonna be we're looking at here is the screws mounting for the bare bone PC so we can mount the motherboard in the motherboard I'm sorry the PC desktop comes in with these screws that you can hand tight or tool tight and so these are the areas that I put in all those uh, mounting screws and like I said I already mounted the solar state drives ahead of time and just look at the back and see how everything looks and these are the screws of the mounting the hard drive I'm gonna mount this one solid state drive on this plate that we have here that came in with it. So I'm gonna use this as my main bootable drive. I'm gonna install Windows in this later on. So I just screw this guy up here, line them up. You don't wanna over tighten it, you just want things to be just tight enough. Uh, you don't wanna crack through the, the thread of the screws or the solid state drive and you hang this guy over here grab one of the screws uh, probably the hexagonal screws like this one over here and you just uh, tighten it up and so it stays still all right so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this motherboard and mount it here and as you can see I've already mounted those screws in there and they have this little uh, screw in here and that's what you do is you line the back panel up to that and then you screw these in here so the model mark comes in with that uh, screws in all those corners so I'll show you how I'll uh, attach it on motherboard so I look in the back to make sure they're all lined up and oriented correctly take one of the screws here and you just screw it right here you don't want to over tighten it like I said you don't want to crack the motherboard so just do all these corners first and then make your way down right on the middle of the motherboard like so if you have a lot of screws use them all up but if you're limited I would advise doing the corners of the motherboard and at least one in the middle I have plenty of screws so we're good all right so now we're gonna do is mount this video card onto the motherboard so I already pre-planned where I plan to mount this so I removed the PC back plates over there um, you have to remove it ahead of time and I'm putting in a PCI Express plot slot and we're 
forgot to remove this uh, locking mechanism back here. Oh, there you go. All right, so now I'm gonna go grab this and then mount the PCI Express into the motor warranty here. Click like so. There you go. All right, so now that's good. In case you guys wonder, I have an Ace Rock 580 R, uh, RX 580 8 gigabyte um, graphic card, and there's plenty of uh, memory on it. So now the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna mount the AIO in here, just kind of see how I could orient the tube. So I'm gonna plan to mount it up over here. And it looks like there's plenty of space in the back of the bare bone PC. So here we go. So I'll lightly tighten some uh, corner of the radiator here. I'm not gonna tighten it completely. I just wanna screw it in there so it's in place and then I'll screw the other corners as well as the middle part of the radiator. So here we go. This side, the next one. Not really tightening everything yet. There you go. And then two more in the middle here and then I'm gonna hand tight each and every one of them and uh, and uh, that should be it and then uh, there's a couple of um, these are the, the plugs for the two fans that I have in here uh, in the meantime I'm gonna plug I'm gonna plug this probably up here on the top part of the motherboard and uh, it has uh, looks like a, a RGB uh, cord as well so for now I'm just gonna Put this back here, slide it to the back side for cable management. I'm not gonna plug it in yet. There we go. Okay, so this power. And and this one is let's see. This one would be for the back side of the chassis fan, that fan in the back. So I might as well just plug that in. Uh, that's where the, the chassis fan is. Here we go, just slide it in. There you go, nice, nice plug. I'm in the back side of the PC right now, just inspecting all the, the cords in here. Uh, so this, um, this ARGB controller in the back, there's two different kind of uh, RGB out there actually. I read that there's ARGB and the other one is normal RGB. So I plan to plug this ARGB right in the front panel over here uh, based on the description on the motherboard. So I'm gonna put this controller right in the front like so, because I like to have a nice clean look. I don't want wires all over the place. And I'm gonna plug this one right here. And this is the ARGB, it's not the RGB. like you know you match that up uh, the little arrow should be the on the, the, the ground I believe nothing's supposed to be there and there you go it looks pretty good all right all right the next one is I'm trying to figure out where I'm gonna I think I'm gonna plug these up here uh, this the CPU fan up here so these two radiator fans I just gonna have it run a probably yeah just plug it up here because this I have two CPU fan, fans in here optional fan that's what this says in a instruction book so make sure you reference your manual for the motherboard here we go that's some more cable management I route it to the back so it's looking nice and clean as you can see, I'm just gonna temporarily wrap this so with uh, the metal spring thing like this one over here, temporarily, just so it's nice and neat. And I got some more front panel. So this is a front panel USB 3.0 that 
I can definitely utilize. So I'm gonna route this cable right here. I think would be where the, I don't know, it's too much um, cord. I think this is the best one. Because uh, if I put it in the first slot over there, that area, just, there'll be too much bending. So I think there's plenty of space through the area where the solid state drive is. So here you go, you match that um, plug up and until you hear a click, typically you hear a click, but if you don't, as long as it's uh, all the way through, you should be good. Here we go. All right. You don't really wanna bend too much of the wires. You just want just enough slack. Um, you don't wanna break the connection. So here it is, the one of the hardest one in the PC building is plug in the front panel power reset button and some light switch and because they're so tiny that you have to definitely refer to the motherboard. So in this motherboard, I have it this location. So I would definitely reference the motherboard manual and look for the negative and the positive and uh, Right now I'm routing it from down here. I already did a couple of them in there. And I'm gonna put in the, the power switch as well as the LED switch or HD switch. So and like I said, refer, refer to your motherboard manual to see where you plug. Sometimes there's like written stuff right on the motherboard but they're so tiny. So now I'm gonna plug in the HD audio and what's nice about this tough gaming is that I believe this motherboard has a shielded um, connectors uh, with its own capacitor so it reduces the static when recording audio which is super nice so the HD audio is located back here in this motherboard so I'm just gonna line them up and plug this one in and then typically you hear or feel a click that you know you manage to plug it all the way in so this is how I routed it so it's nice and clean there you go just tuck in more of the cables like so here we go that looks nice and clean I'm gonna route it right above the power supply right here that's all right there you go that looks nice all right so now more the, I'm looking at this fans um, since this uh, very long uh, cable, I'm gonna route it down here. I have two more to plug the the fan on the bottom part of the motherboard. So like here, I'll show you guys where. So here we go. There's one here and there's one here. So I'm gonna put them all both up there. So because you can definitely power it up right under power supply but it will run a full blast uh, I like to kind of control it through the BIOS or whatever application that I have on the PC uh, there's a lot of like third-party application that you can control the fans and how fast you want it to be but yeah so me I'm just gonna call it through the BIOS uh, that's you know so you can see how fast the fans are running and stuff but by all means, you can definitely plug this thing in right onto the, the power supply. Uh, it's optional. It should have some kind of a converter, um, a ball like converter or some sort. So, but yeah, I like mine to plug it in here and I advise you guys doing it that way. Yo, good. All right, so next one is the ATX power 24 pin. Um, power for the motherboard so you should yeah so right now pointing it here is a 24 pin it will definitely mark it right there see there you go you can see it every modular motherboard will tell you where the 24 pin power is for the ATX so there you go you just plug that thing in until you hear a click and it should lock into place I'm gonna do that right now it's hard to do one hand only, so I have to do two hands. Here we go. And I'm gonna route this right here in the front. 
because that's where the typical ATX 24 pin on the motherboard right here see you know you make sure you have that lever on that side it's in cor corrected uh, orientation and you just forcefully plug it all the way in until you hear a click or or it's just like put firmly into place there you go and then tuck in a little bit of that nope all right now I'm gonna go take a look at the extra CPU power uh, some motherboard comes in with it uh, either an 8 pin or uh, basically it's like the same thing as 24 pin except it needs extra power so and my motherboard requires this so you have sometimes you have 16 pin extra or you can plug in the 12 pin like mine so mine has that 8 pin in here and then 4 extra over here your motherboard uh, your power supply should come in with extra cords that's capable of, you know providing it like so so right now I'll plug it in here possibly I should have plugged this thing in before I put in the AIO but that's okay um, so yeah I managed to do it so I'm gonna route this down here to the power supply so I'm just gonna put that thing out there and try to sneak that top over here like so there you go I got that in pull it in and do some cable management while you're at it there you go get it out of that fan and like I said I should have put it in ahead of time before the fan but that's okay like I said you can make things work so all right so now we have one cable that's still dangling and we're gonna plug that one and route it down here it'll tell you where the CPU ATX is you see it in there there you go it's written in there so you can see it I took out that 24 pin for now so you guys can see it so yeah so I applied that one in here and until you hear it click click there you go and good so I got rid of the 24 pin for now so to get some more space so we're gonna plug in the, the GPU PCI Express cord so to power up our video card uh, so you plug that thing in here uh, it says it's marked right on the modular thing so I'm gonna plug that one in here I uh, decided to probably put it a little bit closer to me so I was thinking of putting it all the way back there but I just want to do it close to me so it's easier access and that's what I like about these modular power supplies is you can plug it anywhere as long as you plug it to the right um, spot so I'm routing this uh, cord right in the front so and as you can see on that video card there's like a plug there like a, a is it 8 pin plug the PSI Express and plug in that power there if you notice that if you plug in your graphic card and suddenly you power on your computer let's say you're done and it's not powering up you don't see any mod, uh, power in the monitor because most likely your graphic card needs the power so yeah, so that's there. Now we're gonna mount uh, power and uh, plug in the solid state drive with the SATA cable that's provided by the the power supply. They typically come in with a power supply. Uh, the the SATA power, not the SATA cables. So you plug that power in one of these things. It's clearly marked so I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do is uh, since I, I want to do a couple of cable management cable management so I'm gonna do it like this kind of make it makes sense and get all of these stuff plug in that sat up power cable over there so as you can see I'll show it to you guys here you go I'm gonna plug it right over there until you hear it click there you go and route this cable probably like right back here Bobby would help there you go you have to kind of strategically put
put certain areas of cable so it's like nice and neat without constricting anything. So there's like a little L shape in a way. So make sure you match that to your SSD so as to drive. There you go. Just click that. Boom, there you go. And the other one is this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that downwards like that. Just see. Make sure that, that L part is oriented correctly. And boom, there you go. That's pretty nice and neat. And do you have this one dangling here? I'll just, you know, cable manage it like that. So we're good. And the next one is the SATA cable to plug into the motherboard. And this one comes in with a motherboard. Every motherboard comes in with it. One has like a, an L shape SATA. The other one is just a straight through SATA cable. So I'm gonna use these to uh, plug in um, the mounted solid state drive that is uh, over here. So there you go, I'll plug them both in there so you can see that. And we're gonna plug it right in front over here. I believe since using the M2 solid state drive, I think two of them, like here, these two, would be disabled or the one in the bottom might be disabled but I believe from my motherboard manual the top two would be disabled so I'm using the bottom SATA instead but from what I also hear that this specific motherboard won't disable it but just to make sure I decided to just plug it into the bottom SATA if I ever want to expand in storage I'll go ahead and plug in the other two but for now, I want to do it right here in the bottom. As you can see, there's like four SATA over there. So I, I decided to plug it into the bottom part of the SATA. Because I know this would work for sure. There you go. Now we're going to go ahead and plug this into the two mounted SSD drive in here. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to cable okay, we'll manage it I want to make it nice and neat like so there you go all right and the other one plug this one in I'm gonna plug it upwards make sure I orient it correctly there we go yeah there we go Just kind of, yeah I think we're good all right now let's see how the front looks. It looks nice and flushed. There we go. Make sure they're all nice and secured. All right, everything looks pretty good. Yep. Okay, so the next one is I'm gonna plug in this SATA and power as well, but I'm gonna plug this one and um, right on the bottom part. So it's best to remove the plate and plug it that way instead of trying to figure out how should you plug this thing in. So I plug this one in, make sure it's correct orientation. There we go. And plug in the, the SATA cable right here. Then just uh, screw the plate back in. Then now we're gonna go look for the power supply, uh, where to plug this thing in. Pretty much anywhere where it says IDE, SATA, power over there, and the power supply, you can plug it in anywhere there. So that's what's nice about this modular power supply. All right, so just do a little bit of um, cable management. So looking at this one to power up the RGB so I'm gonna power it up using the SATA cable dongle with the SATA solid drive solid state drive over here so I'm I'm basically plugging it in there there you go tapping into that power and for this fan unfortunately there's no more space to plug in the uh, another fan into the motherboard so I'm just gonna utilize the, the power supply to provide that power 
so that fan would just spin at full speed luckily I have this adapter that you see here that I could use and there we go plug that in and uh, onto the motherboard so I'm routing it out down here in the bottom because I'm gonna plug it right here I have like four more SATA interface over here, so I'm just gonna do it right here. There you go. Yep, there you go. And that that's the final storage drive that I'm gonna be using. Just gonna do a couple more cable management here. I think that should be good. Alright. So now we're gonna go for the CPU. CPU that I have is AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. So I hear that this uh, CPU tends to go hot. Um, so I got myself a Cryonaut Thermal Greasy Hydronaut, not Cryonaut, Hydronaut. And the uh, nice thing about this is it comes in with a, a little spreader and this little toothpaste looking tube. And how I apply the thermal grease here is I know majority of them they put them right in the center but me I like to spread mine across that's the best coverage so I don't like to do the whole you put it right in the middle and then suddenly um, you uh, once you put in the, the cooler in there it doesn't spread out evenly Oh man, I put too much. <laughs> but that's just perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and try to spread this thing evenly. So I'm going to skip some time because this takes time. You have to do it very thin all across the CPU. Like so. Alright, going across. Try to cover it up. There go. It looks like it's not a lot, but the more you spread it around, you'll see the kind of coverage that you get out of it. Do some more. Yeah, there's like several, you see a lot of YouTubers or YouTube online, they'll just put a dot right in the middle or uh, an X all across. I. I tried doing that before and it doesn't have full coverage I like the old classic way um, back in the 90s era or 2000 the way you're doing it so this is the best way so I suggest you guys should do it this way so you guys won't have any heat problems with the CPU because this way once you know it's covered, you know that's covered. And um, it will spread out perfectly. So here we go. I already finished the whole thing up. And that's how it's supposed to look like. Nice and thin. Then there's this lever over here. That's what I like about the uh, AMD motherboard. There's like a little indicator on top left. It's like a little arrow etched into the plastic. And then on the CPU itself, you'll see like a little gold arrow right over there very very tiny you'll see it in the naked eye uh, if you flip it around there's also an arrow there too so basically you match that arrow to the arrow of the cpu so you flip this lever and then you carefully just slide this cpu right into the socket match that arrow where the arrow is pointed at and then once it sits firmly into place uh, to try to move it around make sure that it's on the hole and then you press this lever down so and then you should hear a click once you lever it down there you go that's when you'll hear the click so we're good so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply the AIO onto the CPU so First, I need to clean up the copper, um, copper 
connector right here, the surface. So I use 70% isopropyl alcohol, just clean it up. You want to get rid of all the grease or fingerprints or dust that's in there. And there we go. And then AIO comes provided with these uh, spring with screw. So you use these screw to tighten up your AIO into the motherboard. So first we're going to hand tighten it. First I'm going to have to orient the uh, AIO contact like so and to me this is the best position for me to the uh, for me to position this um, Enermax AIO right here because based on a tube and you put that screw with the springs right on to those uh, screw that we put in earlier there you go just align them like that go and then you just press a little bit onto the mid on the middle part of the AIO and then you just like hand tighten first there you go hand tightening them there you go so you can see better hand tighten the opposite side almost like a star pattern but not really so there you go once you hand tighten them you uh, pick up one of the Phillips and you tighten them completely. Do be careful, you don't want to over tighten it too much or crack the motherboard. As soon as you feel that you uh, reach the moment of tightness, you just stop from there. So this one is the AIO plug, so and you'll see in the motherboard AIO uh, power and that's where you plug in the AIO this uh, will power the pump um, right on the motherboard at its full um, speed. So yeah, so we're good. The cable looks nice. And um, we close this guy up. So that's all my cable management. And tuck in all the the wiring and make sure no other wires are touching the metal part of uh, the PC. There you go. And then you apply that screw that was provided to you to, tie, to close everything up. There you have it. So far that's how it looks and I have this uh, little wire in here. This is my temperature reader. It's just a little peripheral that I like to add to see and find out how hot it is inside the case. And I also have uh, an extra USB panel in the back that I can use up. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that one in. Just a normal USB 2.0. I know the color doesn't match, it's hard to find the right color, but this is just another USB panel from my older PC. I just thought I want to have an extra USB plug, so I'm going to go ahead and attach this one here. Might as well utilize it and put in the back locking plate, pin that back in. And plug the USB 2.0 into one of the front panel area of your motherboard. There is one available, there should be one available at least. You can refer to your manual of the motherboard. It will tell you where the USB 2.0 is. And there you have it. Now we put in the tampered glass. Close it up. Yeah, the best way to do it is to lay it down flat like this instead of like standing up there you go tighten everything up and we should be almost good to go and what we're gonna do is we're gonna power this thing up make sure everything lights up it goes through post and everything like that and um, pretty much that's how you build this PC 
and in fact after I power this computer up and uh, just stock and everything like that um, out of the box the CPU are actually uh, overclocked so it can it runs hot high voltage and all that kind of stuff so it's best that you uh, go into BIOS and do some kind of configuration to get the system stable uh, don't be scared once uh, your computer blue screens uh, I know we all hate that we think that we're breaking our motherboard and CPU but that's only a safety measure where it'll just blue screen for you that there's certain hardwares that are not compatible or you need to make some kind of configuration because too much voltage here and there so yeah it needs to do a little bit of actually if anything a lot of TLC on this machine uh, it's not like an Intel platform where you just power plug everything up power it up everything is stable if you're going to the AMD route it is a little bit more daunting where you have to do a lot of manual configuration and be very patient so and eventually you'll be able to get the system up and running I'm only using this computer just strictly for video editing photo editing try to use 8 core I'm not trying to overclock it or anything maybe a little bit of gaming here and there but I'm not geared for gaming like this so but I finally got a stable maybe I probably might do another video on how I set up to get a stable just strictly for what I needed to do um, but yeah so if you guys like this video make sure you hit that like like and subscribe to my channel anyways talk to you guys soon later